what day is it? What day is it? Oh yeah, it's hump day. Welcome everybody to the hump day edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday as we are going to do today what we do every day. We're going to start our day by looking at the same 10 to 12 futures markets from an educational perspective, identifying breakout and reversal opportunities. As we kind of get rolling today, one of the things that I want you to consider is what do we do when the market is telling us to pause, right? What do we do when the market's giving us a little bit less clear trend signals uh, and telling us it might be time to take a little break? Do you force trades every day? Do you go down to smaller time frames? Leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear that. That's our question of the day. So comments down below. And by the way, I ask for comments every day because it really, really helps uh, the channel for people to know that human beings are actually watching. So any comment helps, even if you just even if you just put hello in the comments, it's going to help the uh, it's going to help the algorithms know that people are paying attention. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So in the ES this morning, we are up thirty points, moving, humming, humming right along, if you will. Uh, yesterday we did have a pretty decent rally up, and we saw that you know our rally up actually came from our Sunday night setup, and the Sunday night setup continued its move, and then yesterday we saw a little bit of a stall. Now towards the end of the day yesterday, I thought we might get a bit of a sell off, which is exactly what we saw um, was a bit of a sell off uh, yesterday afternoon. I put in a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern here. Uh, if you really look at it, and then that head and shoulders pattern hit a, about its measured move target and is basically back to where it's where where it ended the day yesterday. So so the markets are, you know, technically we're up 32, but we are still below our high from yesterday, uh, just a smidge. And we are still below our our high from the the European market open, which was up in this range here. So I've got nothing new to add to my S&P trade. My S&P levels from yesterday were these areas of demand down here for potential reversal trades. I think it still stands uh, if price can make it down to that region. Now, I mean, obviously, we could look for a breakout to the upside as long as I get quality basing inside of this region here. But I do have this area here to contend with above there. When I go to a 15-minute chart, this area up here you know, this is a really clean wick over wick level right here on a 15 minute at the European market open. So um, I, I'm afraid to take a breakout trade above here because I don't have enough room to roam to make this make sense. And that's what I really want to be key into is where am I, where's my room to roam? And it just doesn't exist in this trade. So that's going to force me to look at a different market. Uh, looking at the NQ. So on our NQ trade, we had a setup yesterday where we had a little bit of a breakout, and the breakout trade worked for a really nice move. And we then said, well, if if we're seeing this thing chop sideways, if you want to try a little bit of a breakdown, then you might even be able to get a little bit of a pullback, as I thought we may pull back into this region. So we did actually break below there yesterday in the post-market time. However, we had no basing in front of this level. So I actually got a really great email question yesterday. And by the way, if you have email questions or you've got questions, please leave them in the comment section below so we can answer them for you. But somebody said, you know, I, I have a hard time understanding why basing before a level is important. I thought that, you know, uh, you know, why do I want basing in front of a level? Well, the key is, is that I don't want basing in front of reversal trades, but I do want basing in front of breakouts. And so a breakout trade would require basing uh, because that's going to allow it to pile up enough orders to thrust through these breakout levels. Without the basing, sometimes it'll just poke through and reverse the other way. And that's why this does not count as a breakout. It doesn't follow my breakout rules, which include basing immediately before the level. And so that's why this level was unable to really hold any move down was because there was no basing directly in front of it. And we saw price move away. So, you know, looking at what I might have today, we may have, you know, I'm still going to leave this line in here because I think it still could be okay provided that we get the basing. We're still in a bit of a range. Um, and if we get basing above here, then I think you've got room to run up to this area of supply. Uh, that would be the area that I would look for. Next, uh, looking at crude oil. So we've been analyzing the September contract. For those of you that are still looking at that September contract, really a lot of volatility has been sucked out of crude oil, we're seeing the volatility coming back down to a more normalized area, and uh, and this would be 
the the level I would look for for a potential reversal. Now we came close to that level, but unable to get into it as of yet. And you know, a lot of times we would look for this for a breakdown, and there may be a little breakdown here for a few ticks um, if we get basing in front of it, because because we are getting you know that that region of uh, of slightly lower highs right however that has broken just a little bit now i don't trade on the breakout of the actual triangle i need a breakout to come and give me an entry signal and right now i'd have to have a little bit more basing in front of this region that's not exactly a straight line there is it um i would need a little bit more basing in front of this region for this to be my point for a breakout but the problem is i do have an area of supply here which is which could act as a stall. So I don't know that a that a breakout to the upside is as clean on this picture um, at the moment because of that little area of supply up above. If we base right around that area, then I think that's where you have your upside. All right, um, next would be our gold level. So our gold level had a did have a bit of a breakout trade above this region here, and we got a, little, a nice little move out of that zone. And so next we would be looking, uh, because we because we did have a bit of basing here in front, next we would be looking for the, the next kind of move up would be to come back to this origin of this move. And I think there's still a chance for price to make it all the way to there. Now, for those of you that looked at this wick over wick and took the short on this wick over wick, this is really, uh, price came into this level one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. On the sixth candle, price had said, "Okay, get out. It's not. It's not going to hit your target. Um, you, you, we, we've not gone anywhere, right?" For those of you that took that little wick over wick in the middle of this move down, because I know a lot of people would have looked at this as a as a trade, and then it, it you know it just it didn't really cost you anything on there. It just didn't move the way you wanted it to, and that tells me that if we get some clean basing, we still have some room to run back up to this region. Uh, next, moving over to bonds and currency markets. So sitting here in the ZN, we looked yesterday at the ZN level, and uh, in our ZN, we said we would need basing right around here. Uh, that's This is the circle that we drew yesterday, and we did get that right in here and popped up above, uh, but then really kind of went nowhere after that. One two, th uh, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, price went nowhere. And so at that point, it might make sense to take your stop and move it to break even, which means you're probably stopped out at break even in the overnight session, um, if that's the way that you uh, if that's the way that you traded and set that up. Not a whole lot to do beyond there. Is that still going to be a, a an area of price that could act as a magnet? But I have this area of demand down here where we could see a minor reversal. My bigger problem is that on the four hour. The market's just telling me, hey, you don't have a whole heck of a lot to do here. Don't force it. And that's kind of what I want to do, right? That's that's what I want to do is just not force it and stay away if the market's not giving me a clear entry. Uh, in the Aussie, we looked at the Aussie yesterday, and it was tempting to try to chase some of these levels as the market had rallied up a bit yesterday. And when we were looking at it yesterday, the market was – when we were looking at the Aussie yesterday morning in the DMC, the market was right here. And it was tempting to chase some of these other levels. Um, and if we had looked at this area of demand right here, uh, we may have gotten a little move away in the overnight. But really, the market hasn't done a whole lot since yesterday when we looked at it. And so there's really nothing to add to our analysis. Uh, on the euro, we got, uh, we, we got ditto. I'm just going to say ditto on the euro. Uh, because when we were looking at the euro yesterday, we were right at about this region here. Um, when when looking at the uh, at our euro positions yesterday, it was right about here, and the markets are basically in the same spot. So the right decision is to sit on our hands, right? When that's the case, the the right decision is to sit on our hands. And what's great is that our levels don't change; they just remain there. We continue to look at the next opportunities. Now, in the Canadian dollar, we did get a bit of basing here uh, for this breakout. Uh, which we had talked about uh, in the next trade. Now, we didn't have three clear touches, so you may or may not have gotten into this position. I, I wanted a third clear touch, and I didn't really get that, but if you took the breakout, 
one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, the market had gone essentially nowhere, which should tell you, okay, let's either move our stop to break even, get out of the trade with a small profit, and then pops right back down, right? So um, it failed because we didn't get that third touch, and we got to follow the breakout rules. So now in looking at kind of my opportunities, I'm going to look down here to this wick over wick area right in here, which was formed right around a market open. I think that's probably the best level that I have for a potential trade in the Canadian. Uh, Great British pound and Japanese yen. Taking a look at those real quick. Uh, and then also I want to highlight the Nat gas trade because this is a Nat gas trade from our Sunday night live trade room. So let me just show that one real quick. So in our Nat gas trade from our Sunday night trade room, we had a gap and go trade. Now this gap and go trade uh, is slightly different trade than we do in in anything else. It is it, it's it is based upon the gap direction. Now one of the things that we talk about in a gap and go is that price may not actually give you your gap and go entry for the first day or so. You may have to wait a little while, and that's what we saw here is that we did wind up popping up. Now it 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 got to the gap and go entry right here, which means our stop would be below this region, and then immediately made its way to the opposing supply zone before then trading back down. And then remember, this level still acts as a magnet for price. It gave you the, 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 the target on the short, and then that supply level worked again. So what we saw was the gap and go was very effective, and the reversal area up there was pretty effective. And so now we have a reason to believe that there could be a breakout above this region because of one touch, two touch, three touches, provided I get basing somewhere in this region right now i know i know i don't look at natural gas on the daily market commentary every day but we do look at it in our live trade rooms and i know a number of uh, of our members have been have been very very doing very well with nat gas because they understand where those levels are and how it sets up all right let's go to the great british pound uh the great british pound by the way this is a, another example of a gap and go trade we had set up that never met entry right this one gapped down um and then just traded the other way no, no harm, no foul, right? And that's what we look at in those. So as far as yesterday's, uh, very similar to what we talked about in the, uh, in the Aussie and the Euro, our level yesterday in the daily market commentary was right about here when we were looking at it, and now price is right about here, and so we didn't take any trades, and so the market told us not to do anything. So we're not going to add any levels to our analysis pieces today. We're just going to leave it as is. Um, Japanese yen, we did get kind of close to our wick over wick supply level here in the yen without getting our entry. So that means I need to switch this to a confirmation trade in order to stay consistent with my rules. So those are our levels for today. As always, if you have questions, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. We're here to help you. Uh, even better is to leave it in the comment section down below. Uh, and once again, do me a favor, leave a comment, say hi, helps a lot. Uh, until tomorrow, everybody, I will talk to you soon. Peace out. See ya.